My small business relies on internet nearly 24 seven. Even if I'm personally not online, the rest of my team still needs to access local office files I have here. So whenever there's a internet outage, it at minimum disrupts my workflow. Or if you have employees on the clock and they're not able to be productive, it will be costly for you. But this solution allows me to keep my entire network online, even if there's a full power outage in my area. And along with my Unify system, it's able to do that failover to that secondary internet service provider all within about a second. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Chaperni from Apex One IT, and we do small business networking. Now, I picked up the Starlink Mini to use as my secondary internet provider or ISP. And in your area, you might have some other options, maybe something like Verizon or T-Mobile cellular modems. The thing with those is, if you have a power outage in your area, those internet providers can also be down but a Starlink Mini will keep running and provide your internet as long as you just give it some power. It only uses about 30, 40 watts when it's running. So even the smallest battery size, something like for your smartphone, will keep it running for a couple hours. You can also pair it with the $50 a month service plan, which is like the cheapest Starlink plan you can get that you can also pause when you're not using. And the Starlink Mini itself comes in around $300. Now you can find it, even a refurbished one. They used to cost when they first launched $600, so pretty good deal right now. And in this video, I'll show you how to configure your Starlink Mini to use as your secondary ISP. Specifically, we'll be using it with the Unify Cloud Gateway. And I have it paired with that because it makes it very easy. It allows you to do almost instant failover to your secondary internet provider within like a second or two. First step here is to plan this out so that you make sure you get any additional accessories you might need, because you will need at least one more thing for this. So let me just show you what I have going on here, and this will help you plan out for yourself. But feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. So look here, this is my primary ISP. Maybe I should label that. I have a gig up and down, right? It comes in, there's this ONT that converts the fiber. This is a powered device, which is what I'm representing with this gray line. It's going to a battery backup UPS. So at least if I have a power outage, you know, my primary internet keeps working. Otherwise, if this guy doesn't get power, I don't have internet either. And then here I have my Unify router or Unify console. It's a UDM Pro Max. So typically your primary internet is plugged in to port nine. That's what this is showing here. Okay, so just that system alone is pretty good for at least power failure on my side, for at least my house. Now here's the Starlink Mini, right? My secondary ISP, by the way, the speed, you can at least expect like 150 down, honestly, something more like 30 up, but you can also get, you know, I've seen it go to 200, just FYI. Okay, so we get the Starlink Mini. It's also called a terminal, but this is an all-in-one device. When you don't put it into bypass mode, which I'll show you how to do in a second, it also functions as your router and a wireless access point, what gives you Wi-Fi. Uh, which is why you want to put in bypass mode so it doesn't interfere with your Wi-Fi that you already have at home. So what's included with the Starlink Mini already is this 50 meter, 50 feet outdoor rated power cable, and then just has an AC adapter, and I'll show you that as well. If the distance from wherever you're mounting your Starlink Mini is within 50 feet of your router or your backup battery, then you're good to go with just that cable for power. Okay, otherwise I'll show you some other options. So for me, this should work. I'm, I'm very close. I measured it out. You can use something like Google Maps, Google Earth, and, and measure that distance. Now, the cable I will need is this 15 meter or 50 foot outdoor Ethernet cable. And it's unique. It's also outdoor rated. And the way it connects to the Starlink Mini is a little different. You'll definitely want to pick up theirs, not some off-market thing. This is what it looks like here, at least in the US stores, $35. So, okay, 49.2 feet technically but it has this unique kind of RJ45, sorry, this side right here, and this side will go to a router. And then this is the power cable we're using. You could get longer ones as well. Just go to their shop and you'll see there's uh, longer versions of this DC cable you can get. Now, if you don't want to plug in your Starlink Mini to a backup battery UPS or you don't have one, you just want to plug it into like a small power bank, you can do so, you just need a different cable. So this guy, 15 meter, 15 feet, USB-C cable. So it has a DC barrel jack here that goes into the mini and then a USB-C for a kind of power bank. 
Okay, so you can you can buy this instead. I'll recommend you actually get a battery backup UPS so you can plug this into an outlet and it's always powered. And I'll have this one linked for you specifically in some other options and Unify Cloud Gateways as well. Okay, so let me show you the general location of what I'm thinking to do here. So that right there, that's kind of lower roof part. Now I could install it there, that's not bad, but I'm trying to keep this run as short as possible because 50 feet with that cable that I have is already pushing it. It hopefully should be enough. So I'm thinking it's gonna mount right here. Okay, it'll be something like that. And I know it overhangs here, but I just need, and I can kind of push it up. I just need two screws on top and one at the bottom. So that should be fine. Anyway, so I'll route the cable under here and probably somewhere right through there. And I'm going higher there because the garage does have an attic, which starts somewhere here. So I'm just kind of making it easier for myself, a little more room to crawl in there and that should be easier. I could go somewhere in there. And ideally, I would say it's probably better to mount the antenna first. It's just warming up here and I wanna get in the attic before it gets too hot. This is that ethernet cable extension. So about 50 feet, 49 feet, 15 meters. And I'm looking at this because this will be our limiting factor on how large we need to make that hole in the wall. So we can pass this cable through since we can't terminate these ends afterwards. So the largest kind of thing we'll push through is probably this right here. Okay, this will be already on the inside. I mean, at some point we might have to push this through some wall somewhere, we'll see. So I need a drill bit large enough for that. We'll try three quarter. This spade bit might not work because this is some stucco with some you know, wiring mesh, but let's give it a try. Otherwise you might have to use uh, kind of a beefier screw or a hammer drill. And I'm just going to feed this fishing pole through just so I can find this a little bit easier in the attic. I'm going to grab both of these cables with me. This is that power cable, 50 foot, that comes with the Starlink Mini. The exit point is right over that white 2x4 or behind that white 2x4. You know, you could install the cable on the exterior straight to your room. But in my case, my uh, rack room is quite a bit inside the house, in the middle of the house. Okay, so our ethernet cable with the uh, little weatherproofing is, that's what's going out there. Okay, and for the power cable, it doesn't actually matter, both sides are the same. Okay, so I don't know exactly how much cable I need yet on the outside. So I'm gonna go uh, kind of route that, figure out how much I need. And we'll probably want kind of something a little slack in here, staple it just to make sure we have extra and we can easily push it in or out as well. Okay, so there it is. Just trying to kind of get a ballpark estimate of the cable I need. That's gonna be kind of the J-hook. And these, these should be the same length, but they're not right now. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Now I'll show you where we catch on the other side. So about there's four feet. Same thing with the power cable. Okay, I should be able to fish them out. There's somewhere in here. Let's take this off. Okay, so I ended up having to push it down a little more. I tie them together in order to find it. There it is. Okay, so this is going to our power. It's just the standard DC barrel that they have. And mine's going to my battery backup EPS right here. Okay, now I'll make this go through the patch panel later, but Essentially, this is my router right here, Unify, and this is quite a beefy Ethernet cable and connect there, which just goes right there and it'll click. Okay, nothing's gonna happen here yet because the other end's not connected, but now it's ready to go here and we can go install the actual antenna. Ideally, this should be installed straight, like horizontal, but kind of barely fits here. Okay, it actually looks like someone else already had a mount like this installed. Also, three points, yeah. Three points is more than enough, especially for the Starlink Mini at least. 
you technically need like M8, something like a quarter inch, like wood lag screws, something like this. I think it's a bit overkill for my case, so maybe I'll have one, one on top. You're gonna have the most amount of force pulling at the top. The bottom one is kind of just to <laughs> anchor it really. So for sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a smaller one. It looks like a number 12 down here. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, probably two number 12s. And I wanna say this is probably a quarter or five sixteenths even. So five thirty seconds for the number two, for the number 12 screws. And that's a quarter inch. And this looks like a good old 10 millimeter. Yep. And that looks solid. This is the mount that installed on the Mini. So to remove it, you just pull up here and see those tabs release, the two right there, right there, and just pull out. Now our mount here, bracket, for the pull mount will engage in a similar way, except that it's gonna lock at these lower two tabs here. Okay, so one thing you should know before we get up there, right, that's our DC power. So just our power supply that we have, and that's our ethernet RJ45 port. It won't have a click, it just sits in there tightly, essentially. So this guy, you'll notice comes with an Allen wrench so that you can adjust right here for your hole diameter. So I'll first open it up. You see it has a hole right here for a pass-through. So we're gonna, we should be able to feed our cables through there, I hope. Yeah. So again, it'll work something. Here, let me just show you here first. You probably want to try it out like that too. See, it locks in. It's not, it's really not going anywhere. Okay, I've mounted this kind of stuff on my, on my car. Again, same thing, release, pull up. There we go. And this is a reset button. So listen to this. You heard that? It actually has a physical click. So this is important if you ever need to change modes, which I'll show you in a minute, from the regular kind of router mode, where this is also a router to bypass mode, since we're going to bypass the router in here and go straight to our Unify system. So anyways, I'm going to route the cables through here. I should be able to plug them both in. Yeah, and then slide the Starlink on. Okay, so let's go mount this first. Nice. Okay, we won't tighten up the pole yet. The one thing you want to make sure is that we're kind of oriented towards the north, essentially, at least here in California, which is that way for me. And it also has an angle to it. So you see this angle here? So this is actually the front. So right now I have it backwards. Okay, so you see that angle is also going to be tilted slightly kind of down towards north. Tighten it tight enough for it not to move, but well, you might have to adjust this in the app later because it'll tell you the kind of perfect orientation for it. Okay, let's get Ethernet cable first. Okay, so this guy orients down like that. And it should be all the way flushed. And then power, same thing. So yeah, make sure down here in this le left corner you have power now. And we'll go back, we'll get our app right now, we'll check it out. I am gonna have enough slack because I do want to have this removable. Like if I actually wanna go somewhere, I just want to be able to click it right off and take it with me. This taper's not large enough for both these cables, but it will hold. Okay, and that's essentially it. I know, not perfect there because I'm unfortunately getting really short on both cables. And let's configure the Starlink itself. So go on your smartphone, get the Starlink app. Let's open it up. You'll have to sign in and things like that, but I have a couple here. So let me try to find the one I need. The thing is you have to be next to it. We're going to connect to its Wi-Fi, So it's unreachable. Let me see if I'm close enough to it. Okay, there we go. The default name is Starlink in all capitals. So, and there's no password. So now we're connected to that network. And this is again, all by default, how you should find your Starlink. 
You might have to activate it first. It'll tell you that it's going to start billing you. Okay, there we go. First thing to check is alignment of your dish because maybe you need to go back up there and adjust it. So if you click on alignment and you'll see I kind of eyeballed it and I'm pretty much good. It's, it's telling me incorrect slightly. I can twist it a little bit, but it's not going to make a difference. But you can go ahead and do that. I can click view obstructions. Now, my Starlink has been sitting there for uh, more than a day now. And as you can see, the blue indicates I have a clear view of the sky. And there's a little bit of red here and there. It's probably that lamp post, maybe. Uh, maybe some tall trees showing up there. So you won't get this right away. It does take several hours for this to develop. And if you're moving locations, you can reset right here your obstruction map as well. Okay, and the main thing we want you to hear, you see on the network, we have two devices connected. So one is this iPhone right here that's connected to it. And the other one is our hardwire connection through the ethernet. You see it's already picking up that it's a Unify device. It has an assigned IP address as well. And it's also a private IP, as you can tell, it's 192. It's not a public IP, so that's not what we want. And that's why we're going to go here to settings and we want to put this in bypass mode because the Starlink Mini itself is also a router. You know, it can do content filtering, that kind of stuff. So we don't want to be redundant, do that on the Starlink Mini and on our Unify console. So in order to have the best speeds, we want to put this in bypass mode. And that's right here. So you see this bypass mode. It's giving you a warning that in order to undo this, you have to physically reset it on the back of the device. That's fine. And also our Wi-Fi, Starlink Wi-Fi is going to go away and that's what we want. We don't want more Wi-Fi interference. Let's click OK. So now it's unreachable. That makes sense. Let's open up our Unify app. Under ISP Health here, we see WAN 1, which is my primary internet connection. That's all working fine as a public IP as it should or whatever else you have going on. Now you could already, if you swipe over, see your secondary WAN connection and it might already pick up that's a Starlink. And this IP address that's here should start with 100 dot something. Okay, that's what Starlink hands out. And that's how you know you have bypass on correct. But even if this is not showing yet, just go to settings down here, bottom right. And you might again here already have under secondary WAN to pick up that Starlink. Now, if you don't, you might have to say exactly which of your ports is plugged into. So you can just specify that here, that that's your backup internet. We can also rename this, for example, as maybe um, backup Starlink. You can set your expected ISP speeds. I think I'll get at least 150 and like 40 megabits per second up. Nothing when you hear in manual, let's click save. And the WAN mode here is fail over only. And that's all we need to do. So then if you've done that, you can come back here to the main dashboard and you should see under your secondary WAN too, you should see that CGNAT's IP address there and everything working fine. Now let's go ahead and just test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my primary internet. If I go to settings, internet, there you go. So WAN 1 is saying it's not active anymore because it, it failed over. There's, there's nothing happening there. And at top, you see that notification. It does say WAN failover is active. So our internet connection to WAN 1 is down and our secondary one is active. So that's pretty nice that I can have uninterrupted internet. But I think what kind of the best thing about having Starlink Mini as your backup ISP is that anytime I go somewhere remote or even out of the country, I can just unplug those two cables out of the Starlink Mini, take it off my mount, take it with me in my backpack or wherever, and just use it as a standalone device. It's a built-in router and Wi-Fi. So you'll want to watch this video here next if you want to see what it takes to set that up, what you can do with the Starlink Mini. So I'll see you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care.